Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. It's time for Faith to Live By with Sue Taylor. Thank you for joining me today on Faith to Live By. This is Sue Taylor. If someone asks you to define faith, how would you define it? We need to, as Christians, from time to time, stop and ask ourselves, what is faith? It is easy to get caught up in the flow of what we think faith is. We go to church, we are good and moral people, we read our Bible, and from time to time, maybe we have a devotional time if we can find the time. Or we can even define faith by simply saying, I believe in God, so therefore I have faith. You know, faith is essential to the Christian life. It is the foundation and the basis of Christianity. Faith must have an object, and it must have something or someone to believe in. Ours as Christians is God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The book of Hebrews defines faith as having the assurance of things hoped for and the convictions of things not seen. Linda Dat Diller, an author and in her book, Call My Anxious Heart, says that these are lofty, noble-sounding words, but what do they really mean? What does it mean to be sure of what we hope for? Is there something special we're to hope for? Or can we hope for anything we want? How can we be convinced about things we cannot see? And what is it that we can't see that we're supposed to be certain of? These are great questions that we as Christians must ask ourselves from time to time. I do not think that God wants us to have blind faith, but an abandoned faith. A faith that will stand the test of time, the trials and difficult situations, and the perplexity of the times. And beloved, we are in them, and we must be certain of our faith and who we have faith in. The word assurance is literally translated title deed. A title deed is something we own. In other words, faith is something we own. It is ours. But we must do more than possess faith intellectually. We must own it in our hearts. I am sure that you have heard me say on this broadcast many times that I believe faith to be an intelligent decision. And I believe it is. But it is more than just an intelligent decision. It is something that we must also believe in our heart and not just our head. It is something that we must own in our hearts. It is not something to be reasoned from afar, but something we can throw ourselves into, heart, mind, and soul. Faith is to possess our whole being as we possess all of Christ to his fullest. It is one thing to believe God can do something, but it's quite another to put yourself in a position of total, complete, reliant trust. This is the distinction between intellectual belief and wholehearted faith. Again, this Linda Diller gives a good example of believing and doing in her book, Calm My Anxious Heart. She says, imagine yourself standing with a group of people at the top of Niagara Falls. A tight rope is stretched above the water, and on the tight rope is a man with a wheelbarrow. In the wheelbarrow is a 200-pound St. Bernard dog. You watch in amazement as the man pushes the dog and the wheelbarrow safely back and forth above the falls on the tight rope. After his fifth successful trip, the man turns to the crowd and says, I can easily take a man or a woman across the falls in this wheelbarrow. Let me ask you, beloved, would you be the first one in line? Having faith in God is like this sometimes. He wants us to jump in the wheelbarrow and to trust him as he takes us over the great falls of our lives. God does not demand that we have blind faith, but an abandoned faith. A faith that trusts him fully and completely. He tells us hundreds of times throughout the Old and the New Testament to have faith and that without faith it's impossible to please him and that we the just shall live by faith. 
So we know that we are to have faith and that it is the foundation of our inheritance, our hope, and our future. So what is faith? I believe that faith is twofold. Faith is rooted in God's character and person, not in my character or my person. And faith is based on his word and not on my feelings or my intellect. God is to be the object of my faith and your faith. And when we know and understand who God is and that we can trust him, we will hop in that wheelbarrow with him pushing it. We can trust and have faith in God because, dearly beloved, of his wonderful character. His character is always the same. He doesn't shift and change with the wind or with the circumstances. In fact, he has power over the wind and the circumstances of your life. Amy Carmichael, missionary to India's children, said her ability to trust God began with her confidence in God's character. She believed these things about God. First and always that he was a loving father, that he operated in love. Secondly, that he is in control and everything he allows into our lives is ultimately for our good. And finally, she said like a little child, she tucked herself into God by trusting him. And she was able to carry her and he was able to carry her through all things. Like Amy, dearly beloved, let us tuck ourselves into the totality of all that God our Father is. Confidence in God's character enables us to throw ourselves with complete abandon into his care. How can we climb into the wheel, wheelbarrow of life if we know nothing of the one, one behind it or the one directing the wheelbarrow? God's character is, first of all, sovereign. There are no accidents, nor mistakes, nor miscalculations. All is under his sovereign control, and nothing is permitted but what he has decreed it or allowed it. Secondly, God is sovereign because he is all wise. The word wisdom in the Bible is the translation of a Hebrew word that means skill. Applied to God, it means that he has the skill necessary to direct us in any and every situation. Thirdly, God is love. We can affirm that God is love, but that love isn't true for us until we personalize it in our walk with him. God gave his life for us as proof of his love for us. You are his child, dearly beloved, and he would do anything for you. Faith in him is so much easier when you have the confident assurance that he loves you. I pray, Ephesians says, that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Jesus Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Nothing will ever separate you from God's love, beloved, when you trust His character and His word. And since his character is sovereign, wise, and all love, you can believe in him and in his word, the object of your faith. You've been listening to Faith to Live By with Sue Taylor. If you would like to write with your comments or to request a copy of this program for an $8 donation, write Sue Taylor, 10827 Highway 86 East, Neosho, Missouri, 64850. Sue Taylor is a member of the KNEO team and a keynote speaker at several church and women's events throughout the four-state area. To book Sue for your next event, contact Sky High Radio at 417-451-5636.